All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another uh, Bates Botanical, Botanical Boot Camp. Today, the title is all about crepe myrtles. Uh, this is a perfect time to talk about crepe myrtles because they're in pretty well full show around town right now. Uh, showing plenty of colors, as you probably know, lots of them, whites to pinks to purples um, to red. And there's a lot of different crepe myrtle out there. Um, so let's get started. First off, what are crepe myrtles? Um, they are uh, small growing ish uh, flowering trees for the most part. Uh, I want to clear this up right off the bat. We get a lot of questions out here on whether a crepe myrtle is a bush or if it's a tree. There are dwarf varieties nowadays of crepe myrtle that I'm going to get to later on in this, um, some individual varieties that are dwarf. But for the most part, y'all, crepe myrtles are going to be small growing trees. So some of the biggest that are going to be out there are going to be in that 25 to, you know, some of them even pushing 30 foot tall um, eventually. It takes them a while to get there. They're pretty fast growing, but still to see one that big, they got to be pretty old. Um, when you come out to the lot, though, a lot of times when you come out here and look at our crepe myrtles, uh, most of them have leaves all the way to the ground. Um, that's just kind of how they're sold. It's just the way it is. So when you come out, they look more like a shrub or a bush. Um, the way to achieve a tree form crepe myrtle is simply just by pruning. So once the plant starts to get bigger and you have multiple canes, which they do, so that most of them will have multiple stems, say three to five um, stems and even more if you don't prune on them. When they're young, though, it's nice to kind of get a three to five main cane structure on a crepe myrtle. And we want to prune that in such a way to where the canes are in a nice vase shape um, working up this way. Um, and kind of the stems off of each other so we don't get any rubbing or anything like that and we get uh, airflow towards the interior of the plant. And then as it ages, all you simply do is prune the lower leaves and lower branches to raise your canopy to wherever you want to start. So if you want your six, a canopy to be about six foot tall and then you start to see leaves, that's totally fine. Prune it up to six foot tall. If you want it, if your plant's getting a little bit bigger and uh, you want to limit up even more, you can take it up to eight feet tall, 10 feet tall, doesn't matter. Wherever you want to take it at is totally fine, and that's going to give you that tree form look uh, that we typically all think of when we think about crepe myrtle. Um, crepe myrtle is kind of a southern classic plant. They don't go too much more north than where we're at. I'm not exactly sure how far north they can live, uh, but it's a southern classic staple. It grows from here, and then, you know, in, in, in Kentucky, I'm sure, and then all the way down into Texas. In Texas, there's millions of crepe myrtle out there. So all the way, you know, from here down, they are totally fine. Um, what do they want? Let's talk about that. A little bit of site selection for crepe myrtles. So uh, full sun is, is, is really desirable, and it's, it's needed, actually. So six plus hours of sun. Typically, we're talking full sun environment as a four to six hour type environment. With crepe myrtles, we really want to up that to six plus hours to give you the best show, to give you the best uh, growth habit, and also uh, flower power that we want in the summertime. Um, if you put a crepe myrtle in the shade, what you're going to see is that it's going to get very tall and it's going to stay very thin and it doesn't bloom all that well. So that's the thing. Another thing I wanted to clear up too, sun versus shade plant. If you put a sun plant in the shade, it doesn't necessarily kill the plant. Okay. That rarely ever happens. What you're going to see though, is a growth habit that's different than what it would be in the full sun. So like I had just mentioned, crepe myrtles in the shade are going to really try to shoot up for the light and they're going to stay thin. They're not going to have a, head, a real nice heady canopy, if you will. Um, it's going to be very upright and your, your flowers are just not going to be as full show as you would want them to be in the full sun. So like I said, six plus hours is fine. Um, another site selection uh, thing to talk about is where to put them. Um, totally fine to put crepe myrtles out in the yard um, as just a single specimen tree. There's nothing wrong with that. And another good way to use crepe myrtles is to line your driveway with them. That's a good look, I think. Um, and then also close to your home. Crepe myrtles um, are totally fine close to your house. You don't, I mean, I'm not saying put them right on it, two foot or anything, but if you bring them out six foot from the house, eight foot from the house in a, in a bed, maybe on the corner of your home, um, that's a totally fine spot to put a crepe myrtle as well. So any one of those will be fine. Also, I wanted to talk about... Um, how to use crepe myrtle a little bit in another type of site, which would be, say you have a long stretch of um, property that you want to maybe block off or create a screen. Okay, we typically think about this and we use evergreens for that. But 
breaking up your evergreens with something like crepe myrtle to me is a good look. So um, if you have a long stretch, say 40 foot or something, pop you three crepe myrtles, you know, spaced evenly across the whole stretch. And then add your evergreens in between those crepe myrtles to create your screen. But then you also have a, a broken up look with some with some flowering trees that look totally different than your evergreens. I think it, it, it adds for a nice uh, look um, across a long screen. So mixing them in with the evergreens is a, is a good look. Um, so there you go. There's some plenty of good spots to put crepe myrtle. Like I said, as long as they're in the good full sun, uh, they will be fine. They can handle a wet site pretty well. They're not, I don't mean just like keep them soaked, bogged down with water or anything, if you can help it. But they're okay with a little bit of extra moisture. They're also okay in a dry spot. Honestly, once crepe myrtle latches into the earth here, uh, it's a pretty tried and true plant. It's going to live uh, without too many issues for you. Um, now that I'm talking about that, let's talk about some issues that crepe myrtles do have, uh, which happens somewhat frequently a really bad one happened last year and what i'm talking about is a late freeze so with crepe myrtles they are um, warm loving plants so what happens here in middle tennessee a lot as y'all know is that we get late freezes so what will happen is all these leaves will start to emerge on the crepe myrtles in the spring and then a late freeze will come and whack all those leaves back for the season and they'll simply just just freeze and drop on you um now when that happens, a couple of things can happen. Sometimes uh, they will relief back out from the stems, which is common for them to do. We want them to do that if, if we can help. We, we can't help Mother Nature, but if we had an ideal world, we would, we would choose for the leaves to come back from those stems, and it'll keep that kind of tree form look. Now, what happened last year was a nasty freeze. I mean, it got cold, cold. So what happened was is that it not only whacked back the foliage on the stems but it killed all the stems all the way down to the ground if y'all are familiar with crepe myrtle and you remember this from last year you might have had this happen to you i had this happen to me actually with a crepe myrtle that i actually I recently i dug up after it happened because i didn't really want it there anyway but it was on a corner of the house that uh, was a little bit unprotected from winds and i got some really really cold winds last year and it came in and it literally killed that crepe myrtle from the top down now, what I want you to know is, is that it will usually always come back from the roots. Um, this can be highly annoying for some of you, I know. Uh, if you have a big crepe myrtle that, say, was 15, 20 foot tall with some large, you know, canes on it, and then we get a late freeze and it kills those canes all the way down to the dirt, unfortunately, you have to start over. You're going to have sucker sprouts coming from the ground, and they're going to come up, and they're going to get tall very quickly, actually. I mean, a few seasons, and you'll see some height back on that tree, but you're not going to see the, the girth of the stems for a long period of time. So uh, we got the phone call last year, whenever this happened to the crepe myrtles, probably like five a day uh, from people wondering what happened to their crepe myrtles if they're going to come back whatever a lot of people simply dug them up and just redid it um, but like i said if it does take the stems all the way down to the dirt and they don't come back from the stems then you got to wait for those sucker sprouts to come up and reform your your tree and you that's when you go back in and start reworking on it too like i was saying earlier you pick the canes you want to keep you limb it up as it gets older um, but unfortunately that can happen with crepe myrtle so just know that um, if you do if you have leaf emergence on your crepe myrtle and they're small enough you and you know that a freeze or a frost is coming Try to cover them up as much as you can with some sort of sheet, blanket, whatever you got uh, to try to keep those leaves protected a little bit through those um, those early spring frosts. Um, one other thing we should probably touch on while we're talking about problems with crepe. There's not a ton of problems with crepe myrtle. I'll be honest with you. They don't have a ton of uh, pests or pathogens that really get on them all that bad. Minus one, aphids. Uh, Y'all are all familiar with aphids. I'm sure if you grow plants at all, you've had aphids. You've seen them. And there's like a thousand different species of aphid out there. There's a ton of them. Um, but they really like crepe myrtle. And aphids don't do enough damage uh, to usually kill a crepe myrtle or anything, or really hardly any plants for that matter. They just, what ends up happening is that when you get a ton of numbers, say you're not, not thinking about it, your crepe myrtle's been growing, it's fine, it looks good, but then you start seeing, you, you know, you get some aphids in there, and then slowly but surely, you get numbers that start to go pretty high with the aphids population. So once you get a high aphid population, what you get is a lot of excrement from those aphids. So they're sucking out the juices from the plant. Um, they leave behind their honeydew, which is just a fancy name for their poop. And that sits on top of the leaves as a sticky type substance. 
and you will see what we call like a sooty mold start to grow on the leaves. And what that does is makes the leaves, mainly the back sides, but then also working to the top side of the leaf too, it makes them very black. It's just like a black fungus that sits on top of the leaf. Um, so that's something to look out for. Like I said, aphids aren't going to kill your tree, but they will make it look unsightly if those population numbers get too high. Um, Away, aphids are pretty, uh, they're a soft bodied insect, so they're actually a very easy insect to kill with most any of your sprays. Even organic sprays are pretty effective on, on aphids. So, um, whenever you see that, make sure to try to take care of it early. Don't let the populations get out of hand. Just prune them out if you have to. Most of the aphids are going to congregate towards the tops of the plant. This is in bloom right now, but mainly up towards the top, they'll be in their population numbers will grow up under here. So just keep an eye out for that. But other than that, like I said, I, there's not any major diseases that, that crepe myrtles get. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty tried and true easy plant to grow. So uh, another um, characteristic, I guess, about, well, I'll give you some characteristics about crepe myrtle. Um, one thing that we love about them is their long flower show. I mean, that's the, probably the best thing about them. It's one of the longest flowering trees that we have here in the mid-state. Uh, they really, really start blooming, and they keep blooming for a long time. And um, um, it just has a nice show in the in the dead of the summer. It pairs well with like hydrangeas because they're in bloom at the same time. I'm sure y'all have seen the limelight hydrangeas around town right now, the big white ones. Uh, they pair well together because they bloom at similar times. So working them in the same bed is something you might might want to think about. Um, another thing that's that's pretty with crepe myrtles is as they age, their bark starts to exfoliate, which is kind of cool. You get kind of that, uh, if you're familiar with like river birch or something, that, that, that peeling bark that you get on it. Crepe myrtle will do that too. They don't do that so much when they're young, uh, but as they start aging, you'll start to see that bark peel and slip off a little bit. And it makes kind of this uh, two-tone camouflage, if you will, type of look along the stems. Um, and that's... Uh, you know, something that's attractive as well as they age. So, <clears throat> now that we've said that, I think crepe myrtle offers some of the most attractive stems that I've I've seen. I think so too. When they age, yeah, it's a it's definitely a, a characteristic worth mentioning for sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, so let's move on to uh, uh, kind of some differences that are happening now with the crepe myrtle world. Um, they're starting to come out with a lot of different ones. A lot of ones that even when I first started here five years ago, we didn't even carry. Um, so let's get into that. And mainly right now I'm talking about this dark leaf crepe myrtle. So this right here is called Sunset Magic. Get in there and look. Look at these leaves. I mean, they're literally like black. I mean, I guess you would call them purple, but to me it's black. It adds for a contrast unlike a lot of things. When you put black into something you can bounce any color off of it and it looks pretty good um like i said these are a pretty new there's multiple varieties of this plant now different colors mainly whites pinks and reds uh, there's also purple out there like i said lots of colors with this dark foliage on it now with these dark foliage crepe myrtles um, their height is not supposed to be as big as a full size like tree form crepe myrtle they're supposed to be like a mid-sized dwarf is kind of how i explain it most of the tags that i read that they're coming out with are most of the time saying like 8 to 12 to 15 feet tall in that range when it comes to these varieties now i'm a constant observer of plants uh around town when i'm driving down the roads i mean it's constant for me it never leaves my brain i'm always looking around and i have noticed these crepe myrtles around town and i've been watching them following them for a couple years now there's one specifically that's on my way home every day and i take a look at it um and it's been planted very close to a home and it was planted there two seasons ago and i've not actually it's been three seasons this is its third third spring i've been watching it and i'd say it's upwards of it hasn't been cut i can tell the homeowner has not cut it and it's getting upwards from what I can tell from my truck driving in roughly about, uh, probably get about eight feet tall now. And what I've noticed about them is that it's, it's got there kind of slow. It's not, I mean, it was planted like four or five feet tall and it's only gotten up to like, like I said, about eight maybe now. So just for me, I've observed, these are so new that you have to just kind of observe them and look at them as you grow them. And this one seems to be slower to me. So do know that. Um, and I will say, too, using these crepe myrtles, this black leaf as a backdrop uh, behind other flowering plants or even evergreens out in front of them is something if you have a tall wall, you got a big, large open wall, maybe like maybe back rowing these in the very back and having that black leaf contrast in the back. Um, 
is something that you can pair with other things very well. Colors go very good against this black leaf. So very cool. It's something that you just don't see in the plant world very often is dark, dark black leaves like that. So uh, cool stuff going on with these, uh, but it's a little slower to get to where it needs to be, I think. And it, and it honestly, too, they stay kind of thin. I haven't noticed them give a great canopy yet either that we think of when we think of crepe myrtle. Maybe they just need some years to grow. Uh, I'll keep observing that. Y'all, if you've been growing them or if you have one for a few years and want to tell me about it and tell me how big or whatever yours is getting, that'd be cool to know. Um, so, yeah, good one. Uh, good good, good one to throw out there. We have a, a Facebook question. Go ahead. Uh, it's skim on the details, but she's asking, can you tell me why my crepe myrtles are not blooming this season? Are there some that haven't bloomed yet? Uh, no, not that I know of that hasn't, hasn't bloomed. Um, that's pretty odd because crepe myrtle usually blooms consistently every year. I don't know if it's in a shade environment, if it's got too much shade, if it's in the full sun, it's a pretty, um, if it's not blooming and it's in the full sun, then there's probably a nutrient deficiency, uh, down below the root zone. They can get deficient in their, um, um, phosphorus, the middle number in the fertilizer label, and uh, if they get deficient in that nutrient, sometimes, and not just sometimes, but a lot of plants will not bloom as well for you. So it could be that that's going on. But like I said, if it's in a full sun environment, it's very rare for a crepe myrtle not to bloom. So I don't know if some shade's playing a part in this or what's happening, but that is an odd one. If, it's, if it is in the full sun, I try to fertilize with a high middle number and see if we can't get some blooms on that thing. Elizabeth is chiming in here on Zoom. I pruned mine in the fall one year, and it took a couple years to bloom again. Okay. Well, that can happen. I mean, it could just be that the after you prune, I don't know how severely you pruned it, but sometimes if you prune them pretty severely, they'll send out little, little like kind of sucker stems is what I would kind of call them as a, as a vague term. And sometimes those little stems like that just don't produce, uh, you know, don't have enough in there to really want to bloom that season it's still pretty rare though i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna get to pruning in just a second because even if you prune them severely it's almost i mean very typical for them to even still rebloom without a problem every year but i will say all plants are different y'all and all uh, you know they can do things that that surprise even me i mean it happens all the time I, i get surprised by some things that happen around town or whatever so um we're all different just you know all the plants are different just like we are sometimes um, things happened that, 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 you know, you wouldn't expect in the plant world. So that is kind of odd to me. It's kind of cool, uh, to me, but I don't know if it was in a little bit of shade as well. Maybe that's why they didn't bloom quite as good, but yeah, um, that's usually not typical. I will say that. Uh, um, so you, before I go on with any other things, let's talk about pruning for a second. Yeah. Uh, just, just to add, throw some question fuel on that fire. <laughs> uh, Amy's asking, I cut mine back and there hasn't been any growth. The wood appears to be dead. The, there is small growth at the bottom. How do you deal with crepes when they're way too tall and wide? Uh, and then, uh, Lisa commented again on Facebook, the plant itself, the original one that we were talking about that didn't bloom. Looks good, and it's been in the ground for two years, so it seems to be healthy. Uh, and then just one other thing before you get into the pruning, Austin, is the dark leaf crepe myrtle with the white blooms on the table a slow grower? Uh, the white one. Oh, that one right in front of me there? That one's on the ground. She yeah, said that's, it's, She said it's on the table, but I guess the white balloon. It looks like it's on the table, I think. Yeah, but it's, the, yeah it's that one there. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, like I said, most of the black leaf ones that I've been observing seem to be kind of slow and kind of thin um but like i was saying earlier is that i haven't had a ton of time like i said three seasons maybe to watch these guys grow so i've sold a lot of them to a lot of people getting them to kind of put them out in the yard and and help me you know uh tell me how they're doing how they're you know observing them for me and then coming when you come back maybe let me know how it how it looks um so that's helpful but from what i've observed yes the 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 black ones tend to grow a little bit slower um now, when it comes to the pruning, oh, the second one you asked me about the um, if your stems, ma'am, if the if they're if the leaves are not coming back from the stems, but they are coming back from the ground, that was what I was talking about earlier. That is very very typical for crepe myrtle. Unfortunately, it happens with our late freezes. I hate to tell you this, but you've got to just cut back those big major stems that aren't being productive. Just saw them right down to the dirt and let the new sucker sprouts take its place and start regrowing from the base. Like I said, they will grow very fast 
when they have to regrow like that from the ground. For the most part, it's a very fast response. But if the canes are non-productive, there is really no reason to keep them up. It just honestly makes the plant look worse when you got just sucker growth at the base with this big dead-looking tree on top. So it's unfortunate, but I'd say go ahead and clear-cut it. Play for your sucker growth. Um, and then, yeah, so let's just – move i guess to to uh when and how and all this to prune i love pruning crepe myrtles i think it's fun um i've got a good understanding of how to do it and hopefully i can uh present this to you well um so when like earlier the uh, guest was talking about a, a big large wide crepe myrtle um and you want to get it back down into check so a phrase that has been coined in the horticulture world and when it comes to pruning crepe myrtles is something that people call crepe murder this simply means that you take a large crepe myrtle, crepe myrtle like that and you just hack it in half, if you will. Big main stems, doesn't matter, just clear cut it. There's some people that I know that do this religiously every single year. They just know this is part of their duty to do is prune their crepe myrtle every single year. Okay, first things first, you never have to prune a crepe myrtle if you don't want to. Okay, if you get that, that's that five cane that you know system that i was trying to talk to you about that's just a kind of a perfect scenario it doesn't have to be just five canes shoot it can be eight ten canes if you wanted to or it could be all the way down to one single stem to a canopy of a tree i actually really like the look of a single stem crepe myrtle tree uh, that looks nice to me too so don't worry so much about the canes uh, if you know the number of them just just make just make it to where the canes look good and they're spaced apart properly that's kind of what we want that vase shape i was telling you about it's very similar to like roses we want to keep the stems in a circle all the way around the base of the plant but at this wide angle that's going out kind of this way crepe myrtles are naturally going to go up first their stems will go up and then they'll kind of start to canopy so if you start that early and you got the canes you want and you've got all the space in the world to let it grow don't ever prune a crepe myrtle. Let it be a tree. I mean, they look beautiful when they get to be big and wide and bushy. And, you know, if it's too close to your home or something and you have to prune, I get it. But if it's got space to grow, let these things just be a tree. That's what they want to do. They, they want to get big. And the more stems you get up top and the more limbs that you have, the more opportunity you have for new growth if you do get a late frost. So say you're leafed out from the top like they typically do. And we get that late frost and it whacks off all those leaves. Well, then you still got so many more stems to play with. And you got a much larger tree to play with where usually you get a regrowth from the stems. And you don't have to worry about pruning that whole thing to the dirt. Um, so, like I said, if you got the room, let these things be. They're fine. It's just a, a small growing ornamental tree. But... If we do have to prune, if it's too, too close to your home and it's gotten big or it's around your pool area and it's, you know, getting into stuff, whatever the situation is, you can prune. So all you do is you top prune. You take it back. You pick a you look at the tree and you say, OK, where do I want this thing to leaf back out next spring? By the way, we're going to do all this over the wintertime, y'all. We're going to do our pruning when it's truly dormant. That way you can see every stem and every limb and you can pick where you want to go. First things first is do a quick cleanup of the tree. Um, if this is a large tree, you got to know you're going to have to get a ladder out or something. You're going to have to get up. So first things first is to get rid of most of the stems on the interior of the plant that are either crossing or rubbing or touching or whatever. That's just any type of deciduous tree pruning. You want to clean that stuff up first out of the interior and also crossing. Get rid of that stuff. And then, like I said, you just look at your crepe myrtle and you say, where do I want this to start growing at? You pick that spot and then you start making your cuts all the way around the tree at the top at the same uniform level. We're not going to cut a stem up here and then bring another one down into here or something. You want all those uniform all the way around the top. And you don't really have to worry too much about, about anything going wrong by doing that. Like I said, people call that crepe murder whenever you cut the head out severely like that. But I've never seen it to be a problem. I, I mean, they usually, as long as you know, they don't succumb to a late freeze and they and they leaf out and they stay leafed. Ugh, there's no problem with doing that. They leaf right back out just fine, and they usually bloom on that wood. Now, in this case of this other guest that told me it took a couple seasons to bloom, that's pretty rare. I don't know why I did that. It's kind of man, it's cool, but um, usually they're going to come flush right back out and they are going to bloom just fine, even with a heavy prune like that. We got another question: How fast is fast when it comes to growth or regrowth? Well, let's just talk about growth and then regrowth. So, like the growth from the stems. Um, 
upwards. I've got a crepe myrtle in my yard, so I'll just reference that. And I had to prune it when I first got to my home. I did not prune it last season. The amount of growth I've seen from last year's growth on mine is probably about, it's already probably grown three to four feet that the stems have, which is pretty staggering for a plant. That's fast. Now, mine is very established. It's got some big, nice, chunky canes on it. Um, so it's it's well-rooted. And uh, like I said, it's grown about, the st- individual stems have probably gotten three, three and a half feet tall just this season. Um, sucker growth can exceed six feet in the season. Um there's a, um, a a gentleman that works for us that's been doing landscaping for 40 years now. He's an awesome guy to talk to, a horticulturalist. Um, he works with us out here on Saturdays helping people out. And he talks about 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, crepe myrtles here. We got cold enough to where crepe myrtles weren't really trees here. They did not come back from the stems consistently or at all. So they would use crepe myrtle as a small growing shrub. So at the end of the season every year, when the crepe myrtles lost their leaves, they didn't even think about it. They would just clear cut crepe myrtles to the dirt every single season, and they would allow for a regrowth from the roots every single year. Come back from the roots, they get six to eight feet tall within that season, which is stunning. Um, and then they bloom off of that wood as well. So like I said, back years ago, they did, we did not have the trees that you see now. Uh, we're warm enough now to where we're at, to where they come back from the stems every year. So, um, yeah, the regrowth from the roots is stunning and staggering to me how fast that grows. Uh, so very, very fast. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, if you buy like a full-size crepe myrtle here, one of the old school classics, kind of the ones I'm going to talk about here at the end, um, if you buy it six foot tall, gosh, within within two to three seasons, you're going to see probably a 10, 12, 15 footer, uh, depending on how much sun and nutrient it has down below. But it's um, when I say fast, I mean it. It's a, they're, they're pretty quick to move. Does one color grow faster than another? I have a black leaf white flower that blooms later than the other purple and pink trees. And, uh, you know, this might be a good segue back into talking about the other varieties we've got here. Okay. Uh, Yeah, once again, I don't know of a different color to be a different growth rate uh, with the black leaf um, crepe myrtles necessarily. The one I was telling you about that I pass every day is a white variety. And it's been kind of slow, slower than um, some of the other ones. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not sure that color changes the growth rate at all on on that. And just another note, uh, and I assume this might be a winter thing, but when is the best time to move and transplant a crepe myrtle? Uh, It's not an easy thing to do that. It's not very fun to do that either. Once crepe myrtle latches in, it's pretty hard to move. Now, if it's a fresh one, um, it may not be as hard to dig some root out. But uh, yes, you're going to do your transplanting when they're when they're least stressed. When it means they don't have any leaves, they're not actively photosynthesizing at that point, so they're kind of dormant, shut down, if you will, for the for the winter. Um, and that's the best time to get as much root as you can, dig around that thing really well, and uh, get as much as you can, and then transplant them, and then hope you get a uh, leaf out in the in the spring. If you don't, you might only see sucker sprouts come after you do that, unfortunately. So, but I would say if it's a big crepe myrtle and you want to try to move it, have fun with that. That uh, not fun to do that. Their roots are they're really hard to get out. I've done jobs to where I had to get land or crepe myrtles out, and it's not a not a fun task. So get a truck, get a tractor, get something out there to get that thing ripped out because they're they're not easy to deal with. Um, all right, moving on. Let's move on to some some um, common uh, varieties here. I'm going to talk about kind of the, the top three best sellers for us. Uh, I've only got two with me, but they're very similar in what they do. These are the biggest ones that, 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 that are going to grow. They're going to get upwards, like I was saying, 20, 25, 30 foot tall with age. And that's this white one behind me. This one's called Natchez. I had to bring in a small one. You know, I don't have limited space in here. Uh, this one has pretty much played out its bloom cycle already. It's already starting to set its seed. Um, and this one's called Natchez, like I said. Big growing white. Most popular white by far. Um, and this one is a speedy fella. It'll get, it'll go pretty quick. On my right side over here, I've got Tuscarora, which is a little. Would you bump. mind moving the purple one um, away from you a little bit just to see it a little better? Yeah. All right. Tuscarora, straight up green leaf, uh, bubblegum pink blooms. If you ask me, it's just a just a true pink. I think um, it's kind of soft. Uh, I like this one. I think it's cute, but uh, um, 
there's other darker pink varieties as well. The one I've got at my house, I believe, is called Tonto, which is another um, variety of crepe myrtle. A lot of these older crepe myrtles, at least 10 or 12 or 15 different varieties are uh, Native American names um, for some reason. So that's kind of what they went with. So any one of those that you see that's got kind of that that name to it is going to be pretty tried and true. The one, like I said, I've got Tonto, and that's a that's a pink variety, but it's a much darker pink. It's almost fuchsia compared to this. Uh, but like I said, Tuscarora is another good seller for us. It gets very large. Um, the last one that I don't have today, uh, but is similar growth to these two, is called Muskogee, and that's a lavender purple uh, variety of crepe myrtle. That's uh, it's a soft purple. It's not intense. Um, if you want a deep, intense purple, there's another one called Catalba, and we sell that one as well. And it is a true purple, uh, very vivid, um, good-looking purple. Um, another good seller for us, uh, for sure, on the big side is going to be the Dynamites and the Siren Reds. Those are two varieties of red, pretty true red crepe myrtle, um, and. They dynamite's not supposed to be a, a an extremely big grower. Most of its tags are going to tell you it's about twelve to fifteen. Um, if you got a really old specimen, I'd say they'd still get bigger than that. But we tend to sell dynamite as at least a little bit smaller of a variety. Dynamite's a good one too to use as more of a shrub look if you like that look and you don't want to see the stems down low to a canopy. You want to just see green all the way down. Dynamite always comes in leafed all the way to the ground for the most part. So it's got that bush look for you if you if you prefer that over a tree form look. <clears throat> so all those varieties are good, tried and true, best sellers out here. And uh, we keep those stocked pretty regularly almost all the time. Um, and then like I was talking about earlier with these dark leaf varieties, there's multiples of those now. And like I said, those are in that kind of mid-sized dwarf kind of range. And then we work down into some what we would call like true dwarfs, which is just pretty cool, actually, to t find plants that, uh, you know, trees or whatever that can get 25 foot tall. And then you find a sport off of that tree, which in the plant world, sports just mean va mutations. So you see a funky stem and you're like, what's that about? And you harvest it and you root it and then you observe it and watch it grow. This is what nurserymen do to create new plants. Um, and that's what's happened with this variety right here. This is a berry dazzle. There's a cherry dazzle as well. Um, it's kind of the dazzle series. It's kind of the, the, the it's kind of like a brand name, like knockout rose or something. It's the, the, the dazzle series. And they're like only like a three to four by three to four growing shrub, which is pretty cool um to find so they're going to stay small for you they're they're nice to put in the landscape and they're very manageable they don't get crazy tall crazy big they usually stay leafed all the way down and you can use these as just more of like in your landscape small like flowering shrub like you would something like a spirea or whatever so uh this is a cool one to throw out there that stays small for you now on the flip side uh, what I was just talking about is whenever nurserymen find a funky little stem that they want to harvest off of a big one or whatever, the same thing can happen in the opposite direction. So this is a mutation. It was a sport that was found, and it's stable is what we call that. It typically, when I say that, it's stable. It typically does what they say it's going to do, get three to four feet tall by three to four feet wide and be a tidy little shrub for you. Now, I know this can happen because I've seen it happen. My little brother planted one of these cherry dazzle. He had planted three of these along his landscape. The little cherry dazzle series is what he planted. And they're a little funky. They've got kind of a different leaf shape than most. And what I saw happen was I was about a th it was about two and a half foot tall shrub when I saw it. Perfectly round. Everything was great. And then what did I see? A single stem going straight up like six feet in the air. And that's a difference. That's what we call a sport. Now, in the reverse way of that, though, that's called a reversion. So it reverted back to its original self, which is, once again, cool, awesome. It's horticulture for you. It always surprises you. Um, so when you see that happen, you simply cut that off. You can root it yourself if you want to. I mean, you can just throw it in the woods if you want um, because it, it's not true to type. It's not what you want. So, but it went up and it, and it reverted back to its original self. So, like I said, if that does happen, I have seen that happen. It can, uh, simply cut those off and you'll be left with your, with your shrub that, that you want. Um, so yeah, that one's a cool one. That's got good color too. It's pretty, uh, there's a lot of different colors in those, in that dazzle series as well. Um, 
Now, moving over to probably the most true dwarf variety of Crepe Myrtle, which is a, a good, stable variety um, that they've come out with years ago, and it's called Pokemoke, which is right here. And look at this thing. I mean, it literally is just like a perfect little shrub. I mean, if you've been on, uh, where is that? On Whitebridge Road, actually, there's a big church, I think, on kind of on top of the hill, and I noticed along their entrance way, they've masked this whole like kind of hillside with Pocomoke Crepe Myrtle. And I've driven by that a number of times and seen them. And they are. They're a tidy, small growing little shrub that just consistently blooms without a problem. These, these are a pink uh, blooming plant. It's a softer pink. It's not intense, uh, but it's a good little pink. And they're just cute. I mean, they're just tidy, smaller leaves, um, and they mass together really well. That scene that they've created over there at that at that place really, I think, looks pretty nice. And I haven't seen hardly any death out of those or any problems with it. They planted a bunch, so if you're going to see some issues, you'll see it whenever you plant a whole bunch of one thing. And I haven't noticed that. They seem to be a good little plant to just uh, to use in that scenario. Using these out in front of other larger evergreen shrubs, massing them in, say tripling them up three at a time, five at a time, pushed all kind of tight together. Um, creates a nice show. Um, what's nice about these two is that you treat them just like you would any deciduous shrub. I mentioned like spirea earlier, which is a similar growth habit to what this is. Simply after they lose their leaves over the wintertime, if they seem like they've gotten a little big on you or they've got a couple wild hairs going up here and there and they're just not real tidy for you anymore, just ball them back up, pick, this, pick the spot you want them you, you want to go to and then take all the stems back down to that nice and tight and then you'll get a reflush in the spring. So, Pocomoke Crepe Myrtle, like I said, best-selling, true dwarf, most stable one I've observed. Um, it's a tried-and-true good little shrub to use in the beds um, other than other little flowering shrubs that you might think of, something a little different. Got another okay. question here. Here, um, can, you, can you fertilize uh, crepe myrtles during the summer? In the summer, mm, we generally try to not fertilize too much in the summer um, of hardly anything. Um, act when we want to fertilize is whenever plants are actively growing. So in the spring, whenever they're pushing their growth. Now I will say, if you've got a big crepe myrtle that's been there for a while and it's and it's large, there's not much need to fertilize. If it's blooming for you consistently every year, we've got some, you know, fertile soil here as plants latch in and and start growing. It's not usually needed. I've never fertilized my crepe myrtle. Um, my mother's had a crepe myrtle for as long as she's lived in the house she's lived in. We ain't even thought about fertilizing that thing. It just completely comes back bigger and better every year without a problem. I do have to prune it for her. Um, but if you want to fertilize, do it in the spring. But like I said, you don't have to. If it's, if it's a young plant and a young new planting, it's not a bad idea to throw some fertilizer down to it the first couple seasons maybe. But you don't want to add too, too much. One thing you want to avoid, too, is a heavy, heavy nitrogen fertilizer. That's your first number, and that's responsible for green growth on plants. It doesn't do much for flowering, so you're going to produce a big, green, healthy plant, and you may not see as many blooms as what you would want. So maybe avoid that, but not a plant that needs excess fertilizer, um, per se. So there you go. Do we have... a? Uh Got any other questions? Nothing else at the moment. No? Uh, you know, if you have questions, now is a good time to ask them. Uh, did you have any other varieties or anything else you wanted to cover, Austin? I don't have any more varieties. This is all okay. the varieties we have. And this is literally a tiny fraction of varieties that we sell. My God, nowadays, there's so many varieties of crepe myrtle. I mean, I can't even keep up, keep up with them. Um, there seems like new ones every year. I will say the biggest push for crepe myrtle right now, though, is to get them down to true dwarf size. People want to be able to use them in smaller areas. Um, so I'd say the focus of, of most hybridizers and nurserymen around the country seem to be getting them smaller and having them stay smaller. And also these dark leaves that you're seeing, which is uh, very attractive, something you can use in a bed. You know, you could do some nice things with those out in the bed. We have a lot of different colors uh, of the dark ones. As well, I mean, you know, nice deep purples. And I was about to say, reds. there's a dark leaf deep purple bloom out there that is mm -hmm. something magic. It is straight up currency <laughs> money, as you'd say. Yeah, it's a it, it it's attractive, and yeah, we've got a whole section full of crepe myrtles right now. That's how this business works. Is a, when it's blooming around town, we're selling it here at the nursery. So we are fully stocked on crepe myrtle right now. Um, if you need one, you know where to come, and 
they're worth growing, y'all. It's a, um, like I said, it's kind of a southern staple. It's one of those, if you've got a new bed that's kind of large and you want to just redo the whole thing, redesign it, you need a tree out there to be your kind of focal point. This one's a good one for that <coughs> because it's not just a, you know, crazy huge growing tree it's a it's a good little focal point for a bed and then something you can build around say you want to start a new like island bed out in the yard uh, you make it a kind of a cool shape you make it totally round um, putting a crepe myrtle dead center or something like that and then building around it with other layers of things uh, really is a it's a good plant for that um, what's, the, what's the best time to plant crepe myrtles uh, I like to do it in the fall. I like to do most of my deciduous tree planting in the fall. Um, they are, you know, they can be a little bit chili sensitive. So uh, mulching them fairly heavy if you when you plant them over the winter time, giving a nice mulch, you know, two to three inch, you know, layer of mulch above the top of the roots will help out on any uh, potential cold damage you might see. But um, honestly, another good thing to do when it comes to Kramer or another thought is to plant them in the spring. That way you know, like, do it after, like, any chance of frost. That's a good way to do it. So once, generally here, April 15th is our last frost date, roughly, give or take, you know, plus or minus 10, um, 10 days. Uh, I mean, so if you wait till May, uh, you're pretty well in the clear of all the frosts and the freezes. So that's a good time to come out and you actually see the ones that we have with leaves on them. And you can plant them in the spring. And they'll be just fine. You just have to watch them the first season. On the if we when we go in through the summer and those hot days, if we get kind of droughty um, during the summer, yeah, want to keep an eye on them on that first season for sure because they, they can get thirsty in the first season. But other than that, um, really, yeah, I mean, planting them in the spring is, is is fine as well. Shoot, you can plant one right now if you want to. Plants don't care when you plant them. Uh, it's just harder on you. I mean, you got to plant a crepe myrtle this time of year in the dead of the summer. You're going to have to be out there watering. And uh, it's not even just like a once a month type thing. I'm talking like once a day almost with, with some of these, especially the larger container grown ones. Um, the good thing about crepe myrtle, um, whenever they are dry, is that they tell you. So if you are going to come out here and buy one this time of year and you get it planted, uh, it looks good, and you water it, and everything's cool. Um, come back the next day or two days later, and you look at it. Crape myrtle will wilt very heavy. It's got a very strong wilt response, so the leaves are going to turn down on themselves. It's almost got this like off greenish, kind of whitish cast to it whenever it's dry. But like I said, the most obvious sign that it's dry is a wilt. So if you do plant it this year and you see them wilting, you know don't think that it's dead or dying or anything. Just go out there and soak it, soak it deeply. I mean, with a lot of water, you're not going to overwater a, a newly planted one usually. Um, so soak it very deeply and then observe it every day in the summer. And if you see that wilting, water it. If you don't see it wilting and it looks perky and green, let it be. Um, it's got enough water there. But uh, it's just an observance thing, really, is just keep an eye on it if you're doing it now. Okay. Well, no other questions. So I, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. Uh, I'd say, th well, first of all, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are planning webinars Wednesdays at 11 a.m., Pretty much through the month. Just one a week right now. Um, Summer Garden Checkup is the next one, literally a week from today. With myself and Caroline, we'll be talking about how your garden's looking and maybe some things you should look out for. Uh, organic Weed Control follows that up uh, the next week with Ben Trest. And then Common Houseplant Problems with Caroline uh, the following week after that. So we look forward to provide you with lots of knowledge and information. And if there's any suggestions of topics that we haven't covered, feel free to send us an email to info at BatesNursery.com or send us a message on Facebook or Instagram, and we'd be more than happy to look into that. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to you, Austin. Take it away. All right, guys. Uh, we appreciate y'all watching this and tuning in. We like doing them. Like I say, usually every week when I do these, um, it's fun to talk about. Crepe myrtles are a good topic. I'm glad we came up with that, and I'm glad that uh, y'all listened in. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there, a lot of new varieties. So uh, appreciate y'all, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.